67. Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge, until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that perform all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up, Selah. God shall send his mercy and his mercy truth. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above heavens. Let the glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my step. My soul is bowed. And they have digged a pit before me into the diggers, wherefore they have fallen them cellar. My heart is fixed, O oh God, my heart fixed. I will sing and give praise. I wake up, my glory. Wake up, vastly, I hop. I myself will wake early. I will praise thee, O oh Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations, for thy mercy is great unto heavens, and the truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, let their glory be above all the earth. Everybody say, Amen. Today, I would like to give, uh, you can sit down, take your seat, please. I'll have more, I'll sing more, I'll read more scriptures, and uh, please, I would like to entitle my message today, let your faith transform your cave. Uh, we have some two major psalms in the Bible that are called cave psalms. They are psalms which were written from the cave. And we all know the story, the world news about the 12 boys with their coach that have been trapped in the cave of the northern Thailand. I hope you all know the story. Yes, Daddy. We follow up very well. Yes. They went for picnic, they went to do something, they went to go and play with their coach and they found out that the water was coming up and they ran to a cave and the water was coming up, they go down upstairs to another cave, they go inside there and the water was still coming up and they, at one loss they have lost in a cave, in a mountain, and for nine days nobody heard about them. At all. And this brought me. Thank you. They could not find them, and they found they found them, and began to find means of taking them. So this take up my mind. The Lord was dealing with me on a message I preached on the 15th of July last year concerning the cave. And the Lord dealt with me about what happened when one is in a cave. And when David found himself in a cave, he wrote two psalms. And I wanted to consider the psalm that we have just read. How David felt in a cave. We are going to read the next psalm, but in life, oftentimes you find yourself in a cave. Cave is a place of darkness. Cave, cave to be a place you think is for protection, but when you remain there for long, you will die in the cave. Because when David was running away from Saul, he was looking for a place there he could be secure, that they could not think that he would be there and they will not find him, and he lived in a total darkness. These 12 boys and their coach, they were also looking for a place of 
protection so that the flood will not take them. They were hiding in a cave in a mountain so that they will be protected from the flood, from the torrents of the rain that was beating light that it will take them and it will kill them. But while they remain in the cave for long, they, be, they enter into danger. The protection now has become a place of danger. Hallelujah. And for that cause, if they are not saved quickly, though they are looking for protection, but they will die. So, David was also looking for protection in a cave. And he entered into a cave. And he did some few things there which I want us to consider. Because some of you, you might not accept the message. Because you have not been there before. But there are situations in life that place you in a cave. There is a place that you enter, you can see that you are completely in darkness, you don't know what's happening around you. You are looking for protection or you have entered in a place where there's much suffering. It could be sickness that place you in a cave and all you are praying for that God take me away from this situation. Because it's a situation nobody can help you. Thank you. Let me take it directly from here. Let's break the photo. I'm not going around. <coughs> take it. Some of you might be in a situation which is completely a cave situation. Family problems will arise in your life that you don't know how to resolve them. Business problems will arise in your life you don't know how to resolve them. There are situations that you find yourself, even though you enter the business in the mind to protect the family, to gain something, but you have reached a place that the business is collapsing upon you and you wish to run away, but you don't know how to run away. Hallelujah. Amen. There are cave situations, situations that are, that are killing, that are excruciating. They give you pain, they give you thoughts. You cannot sleep, you, can, you dream dreams, and you don't even understand the dreams. It's not a dream coming from anywhere. It's a dream of pain. Yes. Yes. You go to heartbreak. Heartbreak. Your heart is broken yes. for relationship. Things have gone wrong in your life. Yeah. David was a warrior. Women were praising him, but because of the praises, he was being chased to be killed, yeah. and he ran into a cave. And he did some few things there, which I want us to consider this morning. That when you happen to be in the cave, begin to follow the four steps we are going to study this morning. And if you have not been in the cave, let those four steps be in your mind. That when somebody enters the cave, you can use that to advise the person. And if one day, one day you, I don't feel you got to look good in the cave. But if you enter into that situation, you can use the four things to bless God. And the Lord will save you. Amen. Now place your hands together as we go into the message. was being chased, he, he entered into a cave, and the cave is called Adulam, the Adulam cave. And uh, you can find that also in the book of Samuel, chapter 22. You can find that. He entered another cave again, life called Enegedi cave. Cave is, <laughs> cave is a place of protection. But if you don't find him, so going out early from the cave, you will die. Sometimes you go through some storms. In Biela, I told you about two kinds of storms. Storms that are allowed by God. Jesus said, come, let's cross the Sea of Galilee. Let's go to the other side. And in the sea, there was a storm, and he was sleeping. I told those of you, I told you, Jonah was asked to go and preach in Nineveh, and he was running away. And he took a boat, and in the boat, there was a storm. Hallelujah. Amen. So those two kinds of storms, sometimes you enter into cave by divine direction. You have been called to a minister, but at one point in life, everybody's against you. You enter into cave, you don't know what to do. Every, everything around you is dark. You can't even understand your way. You got a cave, there's no light. We're going to see more about it. So the cave which David entered is called the cave of Adulam. And David was there. And some few things happen which I want us to consider. 
Before we can go there, let's go to the book of Psalm 142. Let's see what David says so that we come back to 57. Somebody say amen. amen. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. I poured out my heart, my complaint before him. And I show before him my trouble. Of course, sometimes we need to cry unto the Lord. <coughs> As David said, he was crying unto the Lord. He made his supplication before God. If you happen to be in a situation, stop complaining to somebody. Amen. Stop complaining to those who cannot help you. Stop complaining to people who admire you, who they don't even like you, you think they like you. Yes, but cry unto God. God's given say, I cry unto the Lord. I put my supplications before God. He was not looking for anybody. Because God has anointed him. And out of God's anointing, he was able to defeat Goliath. And out of his defeat, they begin to sing songs of praise unto him. And the, 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 the king was against him. What has he done? He has seen nobody around him. So he cried unto the Lord. He placed his supplications before God, not unto men. Amen. Hallelujah to somebody. Amen. Let's go ahead. My spirit, the verse 3, my spirit, no, the verse 2, I pour out my complaint before him. And I show, I, I show him my troubles. The verse 3 says, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, but thou knowest my path. In the way there wherein I walk, have privately laid near for me. Everywhere you walk in, the devil is everything you said, people turn it against you. Even if you brief your own breath, you say your breath is money. Everything you do, they are against you. Nothing they will say, you will say that is acceptable. So he said, I come before thee, and I place my troubles before God. Not before me, before God. The verse 4, and I looked on my right hand, and beheld, there was no man that would know me. Everybody has forgotten you. You look at the right, you look at the left, nobody knows you. Refuge, fear me. No man cared for my soul. Have you reached a point in life where nobody cared for you? Nobody listens to you. Everything you say, they think is a lie. Everything you are doing, they say, oh, he's just pretending. You are in problem, your business is going down, nobody cares for you. Have, have you been in that situation before? There are many situations that won't go through that. It's like everybody has abandoned you. You feel yourself lonely. Thank God, God has not abandoned you. Amen. Thank God, God is always there in the boat. In the times of storm, Jesus is there. He was not sleeping. He just want you to go through some few problems. Amen. So that you can, you can become his monument. Of testimony. Yes. I feel somebody knows what I'm saying. Yes. The verse 5. I cried unto thee, O Lord, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. In this land of the living, the portion we have is in Jesus Christ. That's why when we are going through problems, we come to the sanctuary to cry unto the Lord. Because our portion of the land of this living is not our home, it's not anywhere but the sanctuary of God. When you come to the sanctuary of God, when you come to Mount Zion, there you will see your deliverance. There you will understand God is with you. When you cry out to you, wherever you go, they will treat you good. Your favor of God will go upon you. But you can cry only in the sanctuary. Because he is our refuge and our fortress. We have no other person, but we have God. Had it not been for God, some of us, we have gone a long time. But God is a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. God, he is good. Hallelujah. God is a faithful God. Yes. We need to worship God in truth and spirit and begin to stop Amen. trying to mock at God with our tricks. It doesn't work. Let's be sincere and praise God with our heart. Amen. Praise God with our soul. Amen. And the Lord will always be with us. Amen. The verse uh, 6. Attain unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Hmm. Somebody who has been uh, 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 anointed as a king, he has been brought low. Hmm. Deliver me from my persecutors. 
for they are stronger than I. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you, see, you, need to, uh, you need to get yourself where you are and confess whom you are and see the people around you, they are stronger than you because there are many and you are alone. Yes, so he said, the people are stronger than me and I can't do anything. My words look bitter before them. The things that I say, they accept, they don't accept it again, they become bitterness. I find myself very lonely, they are all strong. Bring me, bring my soul out of prison. Bring my soul out of the cave. Bring my soul out of this sickness. Bring my soul out of this family precious. Bring my soul out of this collapsing business. Bring out my soul. Save me, oh Lord. David is speaking. David is crying out to man. He's not complaining to somebody. He learns how to complain to God. He was in a cave. Bring me out of this prison. Cave is a prison. prison. You run there for protection, but after two hours, you saw that you are in darkness. There's no window. There's only one entrance. There's no shita de emergenza. If there's a, a fire at the, at the entrance, there's no where you escape to. That is a cave. Only one entrance. No shita de emergenza. Okay? No, no, no emergency exit. So you are there. When you saw lions fighting in front of your cave, even though they don't see you yet to consume you, you are dead already. <laughs> because there's no where you are going to run to. <clears throat> Have you been in a situation like that? I pray nobody will be in a situation. But when you find somebody in a situation, follow the sermon and you advise the person what to do. God bless you all. Let me finish reading that. Bring my soul out of the prison, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, but thou shalt be bountiful with me. Amen. 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 Thank you. Put your hands together for the Lord. David did four things I want to discuss with you. The first thing he did, let's go back to Psalm 57. We take it one by one. The word of God. We take it spoon by spoon, not plate by plate. If you want to drink it with the plate, some will fall out. But with the spoon carefully, you can be able to take it. It said, Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful for me, for my soul trusts in thee. Number two, first thing he did that he transformed his faith. He moved his faith. I call it faith transformation. He moved his faith only to God. So when you, you are in such a situation where you saw darkness all around you, all you have to look to is only unto God. Bible said that without faith we cannot please Him. Can somebody read it? You have this 11 one without, without, without opening the Bible. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. So God, David, Transform the thing that he cannot see, transform it unto God. The first, second part of the verse one, he said, uh, uh, For my soul trusted in thee. The soul of David trusted in the Lord. He said, The just shall live by faith. So those who are just, those who look unto God, they are only living by faith. Amen. Amen. So David transformed all that he has got. All his trust in, in, in the law. He has not trusted anybody again. He moved only by God's trust. Even though you walk to the hospital in your time of sickness, but you only trust God. Amen. That God uses these doctors, use the medical, the paramedical staff. When you reach there, use them as your instrument of healing. Amen. Do you know how many times doctors made mistakes? I give the wrong medicine? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no matter what, no? No. When Tani Far, 20 years ago, in the hospital, there was a man in the same stanza with me. They brought him, he was very good. He bought, he bought, he went and take his own alcohol and drink, he got everything. After three days, the parents, the parents, the parents, the relatives came and they said, 
I remember the words. They saw that after three days, the man, something has wrong, gone wrong. Something has gone wrong, the man was dying. But they brought him only for some small check. They know some mistake has gone, has gone wrong. So when you are going to the hospital even, you must trust in the Lord. Amen. That God will direct the medical, the, 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 the medical staff to give you the right thing. Hallelujah to somebody. So David knows his problem. He said, I, my soul trusts us in this. Let your soul trust in God. Have faith in God. Transform your faith not unto the medical not unto your spouse, not to anybody, not even to your pastor, not even to your evangelist. Trust God that God use them to save me. Amen. So you don't trust men. You don't go around giving money to men because they will pray for you. Trust God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Trust God. Amen. David transformed the faith he has got. Not on the sling that he go there. But he, he believed in God. Mm -hmm. If you are in that situation, I will not take you far. Believe in God. Amen. And the Lord will help you. Amen. 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 Now, we have the scripture where it says that we walk by sight. not by sight. By but we walk by faith. This scripture can be applicable only when you are in a cave. Because in the cave, the 12 boys and their coach, they were living in total darkness. In the cave, there was no light. So I wonder what they were doing. The whole world was praying for them. I saw people praying for them. The nation declared a time of prayer. All kinds of prayers were where Everybody was calling upon the name of his God for these 12 boys. Everybody was calling his God. Yes, Because in the cave, nobody knows what is happening. They were in total darkness. Yes. Why? Now, I just said, when you are living in a cave, there is no light in the cave. So you cannot live by sight. Because nothing around you you can see. So now you can only live by faith. Now, when you live in a position like that, things, you get confused, you can't live by yourself. So you don't live now, you don't trust God now, you don't see anything around you, you don't see anybody around you, everybody is against you, so all you can do is to trust God. So we live by faith and not by sight. In the cave, there's no sight. You open your eyes, it's total darkness. That is it. I remember, I remember 10 years ago, December 2007, we were, I was among the committee writing the constitution for the district of Italy. And on that faithful Saturday night, Saturday we were in Parma in the minister Eric's house. We determined to finish the constitution before the end of the year, December. I can't remember very well, December. When I was, when we finished the constitution, it was after midnight. It was Sunday morning, midnight, after midnight. Everybody was to go home and I was to drive from Parma to Torino. And, um, between Tortona and Asti, they blocked the autostrada. The autostrada was only half, and there was a heavy fog. Listen, I, this is my car, I can't see this in front of me. The fog was heavy in the night, and I was driving. I don't know where I was going. I've seen God in many ways. Believe me. I'm testifying for you to trust God. I have seen God in many ways. So sometimes when we are working for the Lord, when we are in the house of God, when we hear things that they pass here, when we see things and we close our eyes, it's because we know God, we know what God can do. Look, I was driving, I was just driving, I don't know where I was going. Because I can't see anything around in front of me. And the Lord took me through the road. The road was blocked here, was blocked here, you can only have one path, and I don't know where I was going. But I must drive because I can't stop in the road in the middle of the autostrada. So God has taken me through. There I was driving by faith and no more by sight. No more by the lines. No more by the road. But I was only driving. I'm just driving in darkness. I said, the Lord, who are you taking me to? I'm just driving. So sometimes in your life, 
You need only to rely on God. Amen. Amen. Well, we have gone through some things in life and that caused us to, to preach the word without going through the Bible. Because we can testify about Jesus Christ. Because you have experienced him, you know whom he is, he has taken you through, you have seen angelic visitations, you have seen heavens open unto you, so you can be able to preach well. Am I talking to somebody? I'm encouraging you, if you have been in a kind of this problem, trust in God. All your friends will depart from you. They will close your eyes unto you. Your spouse does not know even he will be giving you more pressure at home. The only thing you can do, trust him. Live by faith, not by sight. The sight will deceive you. People who smile at you, they'll turn around and they'll laugh at you. Rely on God. Am I talking to somebody in the house? Can I hear hallelujah in the house? Thank you very much. I just want us to go to the next level without talking much. You know, I go back to the last level. When you trust God in your darkness, you experience the Shekinah glory. You experience God in your darkness. Your midnight will tell you, you see the sunlight in your midnight. You will see some flashes around you. You will close your eyes, but you see things. In the darkest hour of the night, you will see the Shekinah glory. You will begin to see God throwing some lights on your way. When I was driving that night, I saw that sometimes I see some flashes around. And those flashes will tell me, go ahead. You are the right road. You are doing the right thing. Can you see how God is so great? Yes. So we are experiencing God and I'm sharing these testimonies with you. To know that don't be afraid. Fear not. Believe in him, and he will take you through. Amen. 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 Let's go read in the word of God, the verse 50, chapter 57 of the Psalms. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. I think my time is going, so I need to just cut it the way I want to preach it. It's not that way, but let me cut it. Then he said that I want to find my refuge not under anybody but under the shadow of the wings of god now the analogy could be this that somebody will be thinking that david was going to hide under the wings of god like how a hen covers the chickens when the hawk is flying those who are born here they will not see what it means by hawk <laughs> but those of us who come from the jungle we know how the hawk would like to take the chicken. And the hen chicken will run to, 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 to go and cover against the hawk. Have you seen it before? Yes. Can I see your hands up? Yes. You see, the, the little old base cannot see the hands up. He has not been there before. Yeah. <laughs> Gideon has not been there. So his hands are down. You have not seen hawk before. Gideon, have you seen hawk before? But you know eagle. Eagle is the opposite of hawk. Because when eagle is beaten by rain, they think it's hawk. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some of us, they think we are hawk, but we are eagles. Only that the rain has beaten us so much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. But we are still eagles in our own way. Yeah. Put your hands together for God. I love that. But David was not talking about the kind of wings. David was talking about another kind of wing. David knows about the Ark of the Covenant. David knows about the Holy of Holies. David knows that in the Ark of the Covenant, there is a mercy seat. And on the mercy seat, we have the two cherubims, who face to face. On the cherubim, their wings are open. David was referring to the wings under the cherubim. He was referring to going to the Holy of Holies, where the cherubims spread their wings. He knows that when under the Holy of Holies, he is much safe. He knows that under the Holy of Holies, God is going to reveal himself to him more. He knows that under the Holy of Holies, he doesn't need anything, but he needs the compassion of God. Because the cherubims, they are talking on God's behalf. 
The cherubims, they minister on God's behalf. So you don't find refuge in any other place, but you, feel, you find refuge in the Holy of Holies. I don't know how I can go it. I'm trying to bring it down, but I must go far. Under the Holy, in, in, the, in the Ark of the Covenant, we have a place where today we can enter because Jesus died on the cross. And the veil is broken. But it's a place that the priest can go once in a year. And David said, I want to find my refuge over there. I want to find my refuge in the sanctuary of God. I want to find my refuge under the way to run to. Let me run under your wings. Let me go to the sanctuary of God. Let me go to the Holy of Holies. So that the saints can pray for me. The saints, the cherubims, and you and I. We stretch forth our time in prayer. We stretch forth our hands in prayer. When I was sick, when I was praying alone, nothing was moving. But when the people begin to come and begin to pray for me, God begin to work. Hallelujah. Most of the times you need to talk. You need to come to the house of God. And when the saints begin to pray for you, ladies and gentlemen, God will listen to the saints. Then they say, let me run to the Holy of Holies so that the cherubims I can find shelter under the cherubim's wings. Amen. Now something again, something again is in that place. The blood. Hallelujah. The blood. Amen. Where the priest used to sprinkle is there. So if I come to the Holy of Holies, I come under the blood. And the blood saved me. The blood healed me. The blood Take me out of where I am and send me to the next covenant. The blood give me ability to cross the frontier of pains. When I come to the Holy of Holies and we call upon the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and he say, and the name can be found only in the blood. You cannot separate the name from the blood. My God, can I? Hallelujah. Can I give some doctrinal preaching in the house? Yes. This year, I was thinking we don't need to baptize because I feel highly disappointed sometimes that the teachings of baptism. The teachings of salvation through the blood, through the name, is not sufficient. Something must be done. Because those who go through what are that we teach, taking them to the water in the name of the Lord, that the blood coming without, without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. It's not working in the ministry. So I decided to relax this year to see if God can give another direction. But yesterday, I was told a lad wanted to baptize. So I was getting myself to God. What should we do? Sometimes when things are not going on well, there's a need to go to God. Asking God for a new direction. Maybe God will give you some other direction. Amen. Amen. So I'm waiting on the Lord on that. And very soon God will speak. He'll speak yes. to somebody around here. Yes. Not through me. Yes. So open your eyes. Open your ears. God will speak yes. to you. Amen. And when God speaks to you, like how he speaks to Samuel, hear it. Yes. Come. Tell the pastor what you're supposed to do. That is it. Amen. Amen. Because I've seen that it's not a matter of just baptizing. It's not enough. When we baptize, we want the people to enter into another world of life. We want them to enter into the kingdom of God. We want God to take dominion over them. But if those who baptize, you see them like how they were before, then I feel highly responsible for that. Ah, let's go back to the scriptures. Where are we? We are in number two. I'll be taking somewhere on this blood. 
the name I've taken somewhere there. Let's read the book of 57. I think I will not preach much. Yeah, in the shadow of their wings will I make refuge until the calamities be, be overpassed. Look, the verse 1 give me all the preaching. Where is the verse 1? He said, I will wait until all the calamity is over. Here we talk about waiting. Waiting on the Lord. Even though things will be bad. But wait on the Lord. David said, I will wait. I will find refuge under your wings. I will come to the Holy of Holies and wait there until the calamity is over. The waiting can take me 10 years, but I'll wait. Amen. It can take me one day, but I'll still wait. It will take me 20 years, I'll still wait. 20 years by this time? 20 years ago, people who visited me, they were visiting me for the last time. But I'm still waiting on the Lord for His healing. Amen. So you got to wait. Because God is working something good in you. Amen. David was in the cave and said, I will wait. He's promising God, God, don't worry, don't 